People are walking around naked, period, let's get into it. They're walking around naked already, and they're in the pool, skinny dipping. And they're drinking mimosas in the pool, but there's like a waitress walking around giving people drinks, just patting people drinks, you know, and people are just taking them. The sons see me walking, I joined with other girls, but we split up. So I was walking with one girl, she's a Puerto Rican girl. So P. Diddy's son was like, you. And I'm like, me or her? And then he was like, no, you, come here. So I went to him and he gave me some shoes. So these shoes was like some um, terry cloth, like robes, white shoes. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do with these? He was like, go in the house with these. He was like, everybody who gets these shoes, you get to go in the house. But everybody can't go in the house. They're literally selectively picking who they want. So I'm like, well, what about my friend? He was like, no, only you. I'm like, oh. I seen P. Diddy or whatever, and I seen with the Prince. I'm not gonna say what he was doing, but something really, I get real nervous. And that's not even the worst part. Oh yeah, Diddy got a podcast. So in my last video, I reacted to Cam Newton pretty much playing dumb the entire interview with comedian Corey Holcomb as he talked about things that he's witnessed in LA, things he knows about celebrities, things of that, of that sort. And Cam pretty much tried to play the moral high ground and be neutral and trying to protect that bag and acting like this is his first time seeing this or hearing this or he's never even thought about the possibility of some of these things and using terminology like secret societies and like bro we it goes to the comment section of your own video let alone my video you're not fooling very many people bro we 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 know that you're pretending we know that you're trying to play dumb right but i also saw a lot of the uh, comments in, in in my video in particular but also some comments on the Corey's video or Cam's video of people who keeps running with this thing about, well, if you ask me, a man who sits up and talks about another man's sexuality seems to be the one who might be on the down low. And, and what is it with you people caring about what people do? Oh my gosh, if I got to like address this in every single video, bruh, it's bigger than that. Name one time in the video, Corey Holcomb made fun of, criticized, bashed, openly homosexual people, let alone men. Name one time. He didn't do that. He's talking about people who tries to portray themselves as being one thing, right? But they're actually another way. And they get upset if you tell people what you know and have seen in Hollywood for them to actually be. That's not the same thing, bro. And people like myself, I'm just gonna like just say it. I follow Jesus Christ, period. I'm unapologetic about it. Being homosexual, just like being a lot of other things that I fit into the category of, by the way, is a sin, period. Don't ask me, do I like it? Ask me, do the scriptures like it? Do God like it? The answer is no, I follow God. Take it up with God. Now that we're past that, since a lot of you in the comment section was choosing or disingenuously choosing um, to have cognitive dissonance and not believe the things that Corey Holcomb was saying, or questioning the things or why Corey Holcomb was saying some of the things that he's saying. I'm going to I'm going to show you a video of a woman who actually attended a Diddy party and I'm going to say I'm not even going to say alleged. I mean actually I will. Allegedly. I actually believe her quite a bit because of a lot of the things that she shared because there was things she was willing to not talk about in this interview and she just came off as extremely genuine. That's a human being to another human being, right? But before we react to her, I want to show you all a new lawsuit that just dropped against Diddy of a woman who, who is now an adult now who claimed that when she was 13 years old, P. Diddy, along with other celebrities, with an S at the end, bruh, other celebrities R-worded her after the VMAs, drugged her, spiked her drink, R-worded her, and sent her on by her happy way. Why she was at the VMAs by herself at 13, 14 years old, how she got there, how she got to a Diddy house, let alone a Diddy party, I don't know, but we finna read some of the indictments real quick. But before we go to the indictments, I ask, listen, if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Join the membership. Hit that join button right below. Like the video. If you don't do anything else, I ask that you please like the video. It's free. I would really, really appreciate it. Helps with the algorithm. Let's go to the lawsuit. So the first thing we see here, it says, one of the limousine drivers she spoke to claimed to work for Defendant Combs. He told her that Combs liked younger girls and said she, quote unquote, fit what Diddy was looking for not allowing her into the VMA awards, but inviting her to an after party. So allegedly, so allegedly they told her to come back at like, I believe like nine or nine 30. 
um, and they would give her directions or something like that to get to Diddy's house or wherever the party was going to be taking place. So she makes it to this party, and then the next thing that allegedly happened was the plaintiff accepted a drink, which is a reddish yellow mixture that tasted like orange juice, cranberry juice, and something bitter. After drinking just one drink, plaintiff began to feel woozy and lightheaded, making her need to lie down. And then there's a photo here of what they what they're calling an exemplary container uh, that was allegedly or apparently used uh, by Den by by Diddy and the people that was you know closely affiliated with him uh, to actually spike and inject things into people's drinks. She then says, looking for a place to rest, the plaintiff entered what she believed to be an empty bedroom so she could lie down for a moment. She did not lock the door. Soon after, Combs, along with a male and female celebrity, entered the room. Combs aggressively approached plaintiff with a crazed look in his eyes, grabbed her, and said, quote unquote, you are ready to party. Combs then threw plaintiff toward another male celebrity, Celebrity A, who removed plaintiff's clothes as she grew more and more disoriented. Plaintiff was held down by Celebrity A who blank R-worded her while Combs and Celebrity B, a female, watched. After the male celebrity finished, Combs then blanked R-worded plaintiff while, while the Celebrity A and Celebrity B watched. Combs attempted to force plaintiff to perform oral SEX on him. She resisted by hitting Combs in the neck. He stopped. Plaintiff grabbed her clothes and shoes and left the bedroom, roaming naked through the house, looking for an exit at the party as the party continued, which means there were other people that saw this, allegedly. Once outside, Plaintiff put her clothes back on, left the scene in the dark. Eventually, Plaintiff reached a gas station. A female clerk no noticed her distress and allowed her to use the phone. Plaintiff called her father, admitted that she lied about her whereabouts, and asked him to pick her up. After the assault, Plaintiff fell into deep depression, which continues to affect every facet of her life. This is horrifying. This is absolutely horrifying. And this this attorney, by the way, said that there was going to be many more lawsuits, um, which is proven to be true. The wall of silence has now been broken and victims are coming forward. Our team has had at this point more than 3,285 individuals contact us with people claiming people claiming to have been victimized by Sean Combs. And as all of these are evil, all of these are, you know, wrong and abhorrent and, and all the things, man, this is another level of evil for me. You know what I mean? Like, there's a whole nother level of evil. But what I, the video I'm about to show you, this woman is talking about things that she witnessed and she was, I don't know if she considers herself an escort, so to speak, but she apparently came over with, you know, some sort of prince or royalty or something like that. And she, they linked with Diddy. She was excited because she was under the impression she was going to be singing for Diddy. And she said even she, from the lifestyle that she's coming from, was shocked what she saw and how structured and organized everything was once she got to this location, whether it was Diddy's house or wherever they was at that Diddy was throwing this party, right? And she talks about all the things that, that she witnessed. I want you all to pay close attention to who she said was in on this with P. Diddy, how they did some of the things, but outside of the adults that were there. I want you to listen to what she said she saw, how it affected her, and what her response was to these things. Because while a lot of people like to call these things freak-offs, I have reason to believe that they're not freak-offs and they're actually rituals. They're satanic rituals. They weren't freak-offs. They were satanic ritual orgies. Which would make perfect sense, right? A thousand bottles of baby oil, which really makes me believe, like, was it a thousand? Was it 1,500? Was it 800? Did you just round up? Besides the fact there was a lot of bottles. Obviously, that's not for one person. Them, them reporting that this baby oil was was laced with with drugs so that they could seduce and you know people and have them under the influence unknowingly so that it would be a lot easier to coerce them or force them to do what it is that they wanted to be done with them but it makes more sense that these weren't just like freaky people these people are occultists and for the person i have in the comment section to say cult no occultists with the o these people don't worship the same God a lot of us everyday Americans worship, worship. That's what I need you all to understand, right? When you think about when they're saying that 
underage people was coming to Diddy's house, his neighbor literally said this on camera. Yeah, tell us stop bringing all the minors over here late at night. It's believable, bro. So without further ado, hit the like button once again. Let's see what she has to say. And tell me if this is not one of the most cringe and terrifying and weirdest things you ever heard in your life. Girl, now mind you, I'm the only black girl. So... I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm about to meet Pete Diddy. Oh, you know, like, I'm probably going to have to sing for him. Da -da. And I just tried to, like, keep my composure. So we get there, and that's when stuff got weird. And that's why they lock up our phones, because they know what we see in there. You know, it's he, he can get in trouble, like, right now. So basically, so we arrived. Security guard patted us down. They put our phone in this little bubble case. So the bubble case is closed. They can't get unlocked until we walk out. So as we're in there, the only way of us taking any type of pictures is if we get in the photo booth. So I'm walking around or whatever. So one of his sons, I'm not going to tell you which one, but it was like recruiting, like wherever they wanted to go inside the house. Because the back, the, the freak off is inside the house and in the backyard. So you have the pool and they're playing loud house music, Mark. The house music, it makes you feel kind of woozy, first of all, because it's like a rave or something. And People are walking around naked, period. Let's get into it. They're walking around naked already, and they're in the pool, skinny dipping, and they're drinking mimosas in the pool, but there's like a waitress walking around giving people drinks, just patting people drinks, you know, and people are just taking them. The sons see me walking. Mind you, I'm with other girls, but we split up. So I was walking with one girl. She's a Puerto Rican girl. So P. Diddy's son was like, you. And I'm like, me or her? And then he was like, no, you. Come here. So I went to him, and he gave me some shoes. So these shoes was like some um, terry cloth, like robes, white shoes. And... I'm like, what am I supposed to do with these? He was like, go in the house with these. He was like, everybody who gets these shoes, you get to go in the house. But everybody can't go in the house. They're literally selectively picking who they want. So I'm like, well, what about my friend? He was like, no, only you. I'm like, oh, I seen P. Diddy or whatever, and I seen him with the prince. I'm not going to say what he was doing, but something really, I get real nervous. <laughs> something real crazy, because I don't like to really expose people. I could talk about me, but when other people, bro, doing something real sexual that's, so that we can see and so that we can get turned on, okay? So he's doing something with himself. And I'm like, <laughs> do you see him? She's like, yeah. What got me was how he walked up to me. He's like, why are you not in the house? And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, how are you enjoying my house? So we had a little talk over there. He started talking about all these, oh, yeah, you're the one that, you know, I seen was telling me about the prince. He's like, um, oh, yeah, um, it's very nice to meet you. Like, your life is not going to be the same, da, da 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 But to get to the point, I ended up going in the house because he was on me, like, going to that house. I'm like, okay. So that's what made me go into the house because I'm like, Okay, let me just go in the house. My friend like, wait right here, girl. Let me just put on these shoes, see what this house is about. Walk up in there. I don't judge people, but you know when people are out of their mind. And you know people, you know what you don't want to be a part of. And it's just like, I'm seeing stuff that you see on the movies. This corner, this got going on. This corner, they over here doing this. This corner, they over there having sex. This corner, I'm just going to say, because I don't know what I can say, because I'm not trying to be incriminating myself, but they were dressed up like little Harold Juku Barbies. Like what? Little people, okay? We're not going to say what type of little people. but And I'm looking like, what are they doing here? Like, dressed up, little um, red lipstick, like, they weren't supposed to be there. But I'm just looking like, maybe it's some type of production going on. But why would they be at this party at 7 o'clock in the morning with grown people? Like, why, why would they be here? So I was just like, okay, whatever. Like, <laughs> But then when I'm looking in this corner, this person laid out, and I'm looking like, what's going on? Then I'm seeing like Instagram models or whatever. I'm like, oh, hey, kind of getting distracted, feeling like kind of comfortable. Like, she's here. Oh, my gosh, she's here. And then I see P. Diddy, you know, walking through the house, like, with his eyes on me. Like, you know, like, is this, you know, you see, like, are, are you agreeing with this? Is this is, and I don't. Now, mind you, I still got my friend out there. So I walked out of the house, and I'm like, like oh, my God. Says, oh, my God, you should, she like, for real? But it's like, I'm not even tripping. Like, oh, well, like. I think it's weird, like, you know? So I'm really looking at the situation like, I don't even want to be involved in this type of stuff because once I see something, I can't get it out of my mind. And I'm like a hypochondriac, like I keep having flashbacks about it. So whatever. So of course I come out and then here he goes again. Another rapper, well-known rapper, comes and starts feeling on me like, hey you. So now it just seems like everybody is faded at this point. They're either drunk or on all the drugs, obviously, with this house music. So now I just feel like trapped in, like I don't like it. And I know the devil when I see it. Because by me being so spiritual and tapped in, I know when something is not right, I'm not judging, but I just don't want to be a part of it because how am I going to get out of this? I'm already here. And then I heard conversations or whatever. And then P. Diddy was like, that's the one that I want. That's, I want her. So now I feel like, you know, they plotting on me like, did you bring me here on purpose? Like, the, you know, producer you was talking about. And I came here specifically with the Prince to rub elbows with people, to network for um, 
the music week. But then I put two together like, the prince have been saying your life is never gonna be the same. You're gonna be happy. And I just feel like that was, I was gonna get struck, you know, drugged or, or something like that. And then it kept trying to make me, I've been around celebrities before. If a rapper wants you or somebody wants you, they're not gonna do it. They're gonna send somebody else to do it. So. At this point, everybody seems to have a Diddy story. At this point, now I, I was questioning, and I'm still a bit suspicious that all of this is coming out now, but I better understand why it's coming out now because they're saying or they're alleging uh, that apparently uh, there's this new law in New York or somewhere in the maybe nationwide that allows for certain victims, um, certain domestic violence victims or you know you know SEX assault victims to come forward for crimes that were committed to, against them that were, would have otherwise been, you know, far too long ago, uh, what is it, the statute of limitations would have just, they wouldn't have been able to press charges. But now they've been able to do it, so that makes sense why a lot of charges are coming towards Diddy all at once. But I also question why a lot of people are not coming out with Diddy stories, but they hadn't been doing this over the past decade. But now everybody's doing it. Not saying that I don't believe them, but it's like, is it because he's in jail and you feel safe now? I, I would just like to talk to some of these people um, openly. So if you know somebody or if you're affiliated with somebody who wants to talk about it, and it's not even about views, so we didn't have to talk about that, but just give your open and honest opinion about what's happening, man, hit me on my email, hit me on my social media. Um, I would love to be able to put your story um, in the forefront for whatever it is that you'd like to share, and we won't share what you don't want to share, right? But, but once again, God bless the victims. I pray for the victims. Um, this is crazy. Um, Y'all have been in the comment section. Give me your thoughts. I just wanted to bring this story to you. Until next time. Peace. Oh, yeah. Diddy got a podcast.